of all things to get squeezed, the price of nickel has skyrocketed uh, over $100,000 per ton of nickel and then recently pulled back just a little bit. I'm looking over here at the chart on the left. Right now, as I'm making this video, it is at $61,000 per ton of nickel. Uh, just a few days ago, it was trading just over $20,000 per ton of nickel to give you some comparison here. We're going to show all the charts, and I'm also going to go into more of a deep dive on what nickel is used on, more of the mining stats, thing like things like that in this video. But most importantly, I'm going to give my play on how I'm going about this because there's a certain metal that is not being looked at that is actually the byproduct of nickel. So there's everybody looking at nickel right now and wanting to trade in nickel despite that they actually halted it. So it skyrocketed so much there was such a squeeze on it that the LME actually halted trading in nickel which I think is pretty wrong, but that's what happened. It skyrocketed so much it pulled kind of the Robin Hood GameStop type thing where they only allowed you, I don't know if they only allowed you to sell it or they just halted it altogether. They might have just halted it altogether, but similar concept to when they halted GameStop for being in a short squeeze situation. Doesn't seem right, but that's what happened. Um, so let's go into the details of Nickel. Let me show you first the chart over here. So you can see more of a detailed perspective of what has happened. I mean, this chart is pretty bananas. Um, let me move myself down there. So as you can see, nickel price absolutely skyrocketed. And it was trading like slightly up, but this last jump is just absolutely insane. And what I think this is, is kind of the theory that we've been talking about on this channel a lot of companies probably gobbling up the things that they need. Nickel is a very industrial metal and it is used quite a bit in stainless steel as an alloy. It is a very non-corrosive metal, so they tend to use it as an alloy. Uh, I actually wrote down some percentages in front of me here. The the production towards stainless steel mostly, so like to more than two-thirds of it goes towards stainless steel. 68% goes to stainless steel. 10% uh, into alloys like coins, things like that, 9% electroplating, 7% alloy steels, 3% to the foundries, and 4% to batteries and other miscellaneous things. So mostly stainless steel it is going towards, um, but I also put up, so in addition to the chart here, I also put up some other stuff. So let me just tell you the metal that I'm looking at right now. So I'm going to show you some other charts in addition to this and talk about more of the mining and the, what the supply, why this supply squeeze happened. It's relevant to Russia is what we're being told on supply constraints from Russia because a lot of nickel comes from there. But I actually have some very eye-opening things I'm going to show you in this video uh, on that. But the metal that I'm looking at is palladium. And I've been talking about palladium for a long time. Palladium is the byproduct of nickel. So the thing about palladium is there is a tiny, tiny amount of it at per ton of nickel that you're mining. So what metal am I after myself? This is not financial advice. This is just what I'm personally interested in is palladium. Palladium has been on an absolute tear over these last three months here. Let me put myself over there. The bottom on palladium was just about 1,500 and change, 1,500 looks like 1530-ish was the bottom, and now we're talking it's at 3233, and that's just the bid. The ask is actually over 3300 per ounce, so well over 100% returns in the last couple months on palladium. Uh, so I think if nickel is being supply squeezed, which obviously that's a pretty serious squeeze going on on nickel, uh, I think that will trickle over into palladium because here's the interesting point in this video I want to talk about. Um, so this is the juicy information. Let me pull this down and why people, uh, I, hopefully if this information was valuable to you, I have nothing to sell you in this video. I'm just giving away some serious information here. So if you find it valuable, please do hit the like button. Please make, take that one second period to turn that like button from gray to blue. If you do that, would really, really appreciate it and it helps get my videos out to more people. If you find this information valuable, please do click the subscribe button and the bell afterwards and you'll be notified of all future videos. And please also check out the Instagram at Rob Soltan on Instagram if you want to see pictures of palladium and the types of palladium that I'm buying. Check me out on Instagram at Rob Soltan on Instagram. But here is the serious information here. Now, let me pull myself down over here. First, let's talk about 
th- this is some juicy information. I'm be honest with you. Like this, this was. Um, I think you'll appreciate this. So this is the global nickel supply and the global nickel demand. So the supply is the darker brown. The lighter brown is the demand. So the supply here was meeting the demand, supply meeting the demand, supply meeting the demand, just barely. So just just barely meeting the demand. The nickel demand was higher than the supply in 2016, higher than the supply in 2017, higher than the supply in 18. 2019, it was about flat. 2020, it had more supply than demand. Then it was pretty close. More more uh, supply than demand is what we're shown in 2022, but we're in progress right now. But this is giving predictions on what happens in the future that the demand is going to exceed the supply. And I would argue that since we've already seen shortages in the past, namely the last shortage was in 2020, it looks like, uh, and also 2021, it looks like there was a slight shortage there as well. Um it's interesting that 2022, it's seen that there might be enough supply to meet the demand, but, uh, or wait, sorry, I was reading that wrong. I'm sorry. The, the last shortage was here in 2019. There was enough demand or enough supply to meet the demand here in 2020, enough supply to meet the demand here in 2021, just barely. And in 2022, they're saying that there's going to be enough, but the thing is there's a shortage right now. So maybe this chart is going to show that it's a little bit inaccurate here because the dark brown is supposed to show the supply and this is supposed to show the demand. I think that it's going to turn more like it is over here because of what's going on right now. But here's what's interesting. Now, since this is just barely supply meeting demand sort of situation here, this is what will blow your mind is when you look at palladium because palladium, these are all palladium down here. So this is nickel here. This is nickel. And just to put it into perspective here, let me drag this over real quick. Get myself there. So if you sh- look at how the United States mines pretty much no nickel, which is a little scary here. But then Russia up here at 270,000 uh, tons of nickel is number three in production of nickel. So... A lot of nickel coming from Russia, a lot more coming from Indonesia. And actually, our the people above the United States and in, in Canada, I guess there was a meteorite situation over there where they can get a lot of um, nickel. And there's actually 180,000 tons of nickel coming from Canada. So Russia has a lot of the nickel production over there, a lot of the nickel exporting over there, but not really cornering the market as much so as they are with palladium. Uh, which is why I find palladium to be so interesting. The interesting aspect is, let me pull this down. I think I have, I think I had put that somewhere here. But we'll talk about we'll talk about this one real quick. There it is. I put it behind that one. Okay. So here's the global production of palladium. We'll talk about that one next. Hang on, let me that down but put this one up so make sure that looks all right that probably came through all right so this is actually the shortage of palladium which is the byproduct of nickel mining so to make this um make a little bit more sense nickel is mined and palladium is the byproduct of nickel so let me say it like this you can't find a nugget of palladium like you can find a nugget of gold it is the byproduct of mining nickel. So it is a very, there is a very um, extensive process to get palladium, which is why it has been in a deficit since 2012. So there, right here it shows when there was enough palladium to meet the demand. Now, this is how much of a deficit it has been since 2012 until today. This only goes to 2019, but the, the demand has exceeded the supply all the way up until 2022 today. So... That is a very interesting scenario. That is a lot different than the chart that I just showed you over here on the nickel chart. So there has been enough supply to meet the demand in 2012. There wasn't enough for palladium. Uh, 2014, there was enough. 2015, there was enough. 2016, there wasn't enough. 2017, there wasn't enough. Wasn't enough. So 2016 to 2018 was a nickel shortage there. Then it caught back up just briefly, and now I think there's going to be a shortage again. Even though it says, it has a prediction that there's going to be enough, I think there will probably be a shortage based on what's going on right now. Um, but what's interesting is the time period when there 
there was enough nickel to meet the supply, there wasn't enough palladium to meet the demand. Uh, there was enough. There was enough nickel supply to meet the demand. There wasn't enough palladium to meet the demand, and this chart shows that right here. It's an interesting comparison that a lot of people aren't talking about because they're talking about only about nickel. And there's some, there's even some traders that I know that are interested in getting involved in this nickel trade. Um, nickel is a very useful metal. It's used in all different kinds of stainless steel and different engineering aspects um, due to the fact that it is a non-corrosive metal and it has a lot of good that it can do as an alloy. But palladium is the one that I'm interested in because it just there's been a deficit for this long and there isn't enough supply to meet the demand, and you need to mine nickel to get to palladium, which is the minuscule byproduct of nickel. Uh, it's very interesting to me. So this is the chart that I wanted to show you. This is actually how much, pal how much palladium comes from Russia and South Africa. Over 90% of the world's palladium supply comes from Russia and South Africa. Russia doesn't hold nearly the same amount of nickel supply as they do the palladium supply. So this is the palladium in metric tons. Russia has the largest share, roughly 45 to 50% of the palladium worldwide comes from Russia. Um, very interesting. The next runner up is South Africa. So between those two, more than 90% of the worldwide palladium comes from these two countries. Um, so the reason why palladium has jumped over 100% in the last couple months here is due to what's going on in Russia, in my personal opinion. And I think it will be much more so affecting palladium than it has affected nickel. Uh, but for some reason, it's not the front page news that nickel has becoming. You got people... Um, <laughs> I used to mess with, and this is also the, the supply demand of palladium over the last four years here. So in 2019, the demand of palladium was 11.1 million ounces. Uh, 2019, there was, not a, there was not enough supply, so only 10.7 uh, million ounces available, but we needed 11.1. 9.6 was needed in 2020, only 9.5 was available in 2020. 10 was needed in 2021, only 9.8 in 2021. 10.6 is needed in 2022, only 10.3 is projected to be available. I would argue that this is probably going to be a lot less when the real numbers come out, but it just shows you this is the supply demand of palladium. It's a lot more constrained than the nickel market, but I got to give it to the people that were uh, cornering the modern coins at the beginning of all of this. I was actually laughing about that and saying like, why is anybody cornering these non-precious metals coins like there, you know, there's not silver and gold in those, right? But turns out what's, this is, this is actually kind of crazy that this is true, but the, the coins that were, that metals that were, they took the silver, took the gold out of the coinage, put nickel in these coins. And now the coins that were supposed to be monopoly fiat coins, the value of the metal is more than the face value of the coin. So they put fake metals into our coins. When I say fake metals, I mean non-precious metals into our coinage. And now those non-precious metals are valued more than the face value of uh, that coin. Yeah. So people are probably going to be running to the banks trying to get as many. I'm sure the bank tellers are just so fed up right now going, what is going on? Right? <laughs> you know, why is everybody buying the nickels right now or wanting us to trade out their paper for nickels and all the coins? There's probably the first coin shortage. I thought that was a little bit of a gimmick. But this time around, I think it's going to be a lot different. Um, something to think about in regards to just our entire monetary system in general. The money that was, the fake metals, when I say fake, non-precious metals are now worth more than the face value, uh, even though it's non-precious metals in those coins. It's just wild, totally wild to me. But I wanted to make this video to specifically talk about uh, what's going on with the supply shortage of nickel and basically why I think that personally, I would rather be in palladium. Um, I'm not, if there is a shortage in nickel, a lot of people are saying like, you know, there's, there's a lot of nickel being used in these batteries and there is some, but most of it is going towards stainless steel. Most of it is going towards engineering things, which is going to, it's going to be needed. There's going to be a constraint because they need nickel. But at the same time, I think that this 
skyrocketing price in nickel is going to lead to palladium being the runner up. If nickel just jumped as many, per, what is it, 3x up uh, from the bottom to the high. Let me see here. Just to pull up the chart really quick. So if palladium jumped this much and we saw a supply shock on palladium, I just showed you in the charts, hopefully that made some sense, the stuff that I showed you um, a little bit ago on why palladium is in more of a shortage than nickel is. But to see nickel go from the mid-20s to 6,000, I mean, that's almost that's roughly 3x. And palladium has jumped in a similar time period. It has jumped roughly a little bit over 100%. So roughly 300% with nickel. And actually, it was a lot higher than that because it was over 100,000 um, from where it jumped. It, w it was at 100,000 and pulled back because they had to actually halt the nickel trading, which is absurd, but that's what happened. Um, palladium, I think, is going to be... It's, it's more subject to a squeeze scenario, in my opinion, because, again... Nickel production in Russia is not nearly the same as the palladium production in Russia. Over 45 to, I think it's like between 45 and 50% of the worldwide palladium comes from Russia. Whereas with nickel, it's a very, it's a much more um, thin margin there. I could pull that back up actually. Pretty sure I pulled that chart up a second ago, but let me grab it. I'm doing, I don't edit my video, so bear with me a second here. There it is. So, this proves it. If 45% of the palladium supply is in Russia, look at how much of the nickel mining of the world. So the world nickel mining is, what is that? This is in the tons. So 2.7 million uh, tons is the worldwide uh, production of nickel. 800,000 of that comes from Indonesia. 420,000 comes from the Philippines. Only 270,000 comes from Russia. That still puts it in third place. So obviously, the constraint on Russia is going to be affecting the overall market, and that's what we're seeing here. But that's what these frontline news media outlets are saying is, oh, there's a supply constraint on, on nickel strictly due to Russia. But I wanted to show that Indonesia has a ton of nickel. The Philippines have a ton of nickel. And Canada even has a ton of nickel as well. But what they don't have is palladium. There's nickel there, but there is not palladium. So the palladium is a byproduct. And again, 45 to 50% of the worldwide palladium comes from Russia. The, the, um, the, so roughly 90% of the world's palladium supply comes from just Russia and South Africa. Russia being number one. So they're number three in nickel and actually kind of a rough number three too. They're number one by a long, by a long shot on uh, palladium, but they're number three on nickel and the Indonesia, Indonesia being number one by a lot, 800,000 uh, tons from Indonesia. Uh, that's, if that doesn't kind of show the real rundown on nickel, I don't know what does. So I don't think, I don't think Russia affects the nickel market as much as they affect the palladium market to summarize. Uh, hopefully that this this information was valuable to you. Um, again, I don't edit my videos, so bear with me when I'm kind of bouncing things around. But hopefully the information was valuable. If it was, please do smash the like button. Please do hit the subscribe and the bell afterwards. Would love to have you as part of the channel. Uh, if you want to be notified of future live streams and all of that, please do make sure you hit that subscribe and then the bell afterwards. Appreciate you all being here. See you at the next video. Signing out.